I have now cleaned the solder off of this joint. Should we go see if that's clean? Yep. Using the scraper I showed you, and also a silicon, silicone, silicon, silicone uh, polishing wheel and a Dremel. Um, and this is just a very worn down one that starts off this size. And they come in different grits, and the black one is good for removing solder, uh, but it will remove. Come on, focus. It will move the finish extremely quickly, so only use it for solder. And don't throw them away when you wear them down because they're good for getting into tight spots, right? So, solder is cleaned. Um, I straightened out this key guard a bit. Um, and what we're going to try and do is move this bell towards us relative to the body because this bottom part here is twisted. The bell's moved relative to the body. You can see that tone hole is kind of oval. It's longer this way than it is this way. Right? And we can even see a little bit, I think, in the back here. A little bit of a twist in that tube. So, I'm going to be applying a decent bit of force here. Uh, the horn is soldered together there and there. And I think that'll hold. Um, I've bent this uh, bell to body brace out of the way so I've got room to move and now it's just about applying the correct amount of force in the correct direction to see if I can get this to go back to where it should be all right okie dokie all right and in case this is the same shirt I was wearing in the first video like I've done laundry I swear I washed it So I don't know how much of this you guys can see. Let's see if I put this here. Maybe that'll be better. Just trying to keep the body relatively well supported. And I just want to pull this this way. And I can actually sight, like I can see how close this comes, like it started off a little farther away. I think we're actually fairly close to where we want to be already. I'm going to go just a little bit more and then we're going to mount up that low B key and see where it lays. still looks oval. I was hoping that would pop out. This looks a lot rounder through here. Alright, let's mount up the uh, low B and see what we got. As you'll remember, this key was relatively undamaged, so where this sits should give us a good idea as to whether we're back in the original in the ballpark of where this horn originally was as far as the relationship between the bell and the body. light in here and see what we can see. Okay, so it's sitting in the front but a bit high in the back, so I went a tiny bit too far, I think. But not by much. Really, that's pretty darn close, and I think some of that is the tone hole itself is deformed. see in the back there. Okay, so let's try this back just a little bit. I don't have to apply nearly as so much pressure going back the other way because, like I said, metal has a memory. Yeah, and that went really far. 
far actually. So I barely touched it and it kind of popped back pretty far. You can see. So I've got to come back again. expecting this pad to seal but I would like it to look a little better than it looked a minute ago okay so there's a little bit left to right but front to back is actually looking pretty good so I think we're probably really close to where we're supposed to be I think that key is a little bit bent not much just a little bit there's actually like a tiny bit of a bend in the key right here. So if I correct that a little bit, that might give us our left to right adjustment. Yep. Still a little bit in the back, but you're actually looking pretty good. right brought it back a little bit okay let's see one more little push just a tiny tiny bit let's see where that puts us about as close as I think we're going to get. So you can see it's decently sealing in the front, a little bit of a gap, and then in the back, pretty much there except for where the dent is. So I'm going to call that as where this bell should be. We're really darn close to where it originally was. And now I just need to bend this back into place, which hopefully it'll sit right over top. That means that I've only put like a simple bend in it and bends it exactly back where it needs to be and solder that together. Um, one thing that didn't come out as well as I was hoping is the um, ovaled out tone hole here. It seems like it's a little better, but I'm gonna have to work on that separately. We'll see what happens once I get the dents out of the bottom of the body. So that is Bent back, there's a tiny bit of deflection there. You can see that's where the original solder was. But it's sitting pretty good. If I just push the bell a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, that's pretty much right back where it was. And using methods similar to what I showed you earlier in another video, I'm going to solder that back on. So I am cleaning up the white out. By the way, big thanks. Big thanks to Jeff Denning for the whiteout trick. Uh, he's been preaching about that for years, and boy, he ain't wrong. It works super great, and it's really upped my solder game. Um, and if you're interested, there's just use like the regular whiteout. There's one that has a like uh, use the quick dry, and there's one that has like a triangular foam applicator. And that really helps. I don't know if they even sell the like original type anymore. Um, that's what I first tried, and I found that difficult. But um, and it just cleans up after you. I mean, you kind of it kind of like dries up and gets crusty while you're soldering, and gets pretty easy to remove anyways. Um, I use naphtha because that's kind of what I use to clean everything. But there might be a better way to do it. I should probably call Jeff and ask. 
But I thought I'd bring you along for the moment of truth as I clean this up and see how my solder joint looks. Um, all signs point to looking pretty good. So let me just give this another wipe. There's still a little bit of white out there, but I'm not going to make you watch. Mainly clean off the tiny last little bit for five minutes before you can see how this looks. Let's take a look. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Tiny little bit of cleanup to be done, but not much. I mean, I don't think many people are going to look at that and think that that's been resoldered. Let's see if I can get one that's a little less shiny. Yeah, not bad. Now we do the neck. Now, this dent rod, you can see it's got some marks on here. It's because I'm constantly reshaping this to fit whatever neck I've got, right? Um, and this is eventually going to snap after I bend it too many times, and I'll just buy another one. But it's held up really well so far. So I've already bent it so that my dent ball can sit here where I want it to. And I can feel that dent pretty good. The only thing that's got me concerned is this is a fairly soft dent. And because I need to get all the way in here, the dent ball I have is fairly small. I wish I could use one a little bit bigger, but just because of the angle and where it is, that's about the biggest I can use with uh, any short, sort of uh, precision. So hopefully this comes out nice and smooth. So I've got it located. I'm going to apply some pressure. Oh boy, that is some stiff metal. Actually, caused my dent rod to move a little bit in the vise. A stiff metal makes this a little hard to do, but it's also kind of doing me a favor where it's keeping the work relatively smooth looking on the outside. a lot better. There's still a little bit of a depression there and it bulged a little bit on this side which I'll smooth down with a dent hammer. And I believe that you've actually seen that in another video so I won't do that part on camera. Let me see if I can get this last little depression out. I can feel it. <clears throat> All right. Now I just need to smooth that out with a dent hammer. Now we are going to fix this, which got bent down. That should be straight. And to do this, we are going to put two pieces of wood. You can use whatever tropical hardwood you happen to have laying around the house. And put it in the vise right up to where the bend is. That should keep anything but, or everything but what I want to bend from bending. And let's see, is this possibly a better angle for you guys? Oops. Okay. Let's 
and I am just going to kind of apply opposing pressure to try and reverse what happened here. I'm not like applying pressure anywhere I don't want to. I'm just going to give it a decent crank to kind of flatten it out. And voila! Oh, and I got the neck dance out. I don't love this one, but this one's pretty much invisible. This one was a little harder. Maybe I'll go back over that later after I'm feeling a little bit uh, less upset about it. But it's not, I mean, it's not that bad. It just, it's not invisible and that's what I was hoping for. So now that we got this straightened out and we got this straightened out and we got that put back together and there was a dent over here I got straightened out. Horn's starting to finally go back together. Uh, what I want to do is see whether everything lines up like it used to. Now, this key guard has little screws in it that you screw in to attach it here on this side. And if I put this back together, if it lines up with the old marks on this from where the screws were before, then what that's telling me is that we've got this horn put back together and relatively close to the same shape as it was before using these like witness marks. And that's what you have to do with these old horns when you're doing dent work is kind of like try and find the pieces that haven't moved too much or find the pieces that have relationships and see if the same relationships um, hold after you've done all your work. So let's see. Yeah, looks good. Yep. Like that one in particular is like right on, which is awesome. This one. I guess that's right on too. I mean, there's the mark, right? Like that's it. The screws in the way. That's it. I mean, it looks like the edge has been chewed up a little bit. But I mean, boom. And it's tight too. No movement. So that makes me feel like we have got the geometry on this side of the horn uh, really, really well. Uh, so it's back the way it's supposed to. So there we have it. The uh, bell is back into shape. The engraving area where all that dense stuff was is back into shape. The bow is back into shape. The key guard, oh, whoops, I already put this back on, but this tone hole is pretty much back into shape too. Um, once I push the bow out a little bit, uh, between that and the twist, it got back to circular. And the bow, I did rebounding, which you've seen before. The twist came out pretty good. Uh, the dents that were on the back here came out. These keys are straight. Oh, whoops. Looks like I forgot. The key guard. on. Key guard is straight. These keys are straight. The guard looks like it's supposed to, or sorry, the uh, belt of body brace looks like it's supposed to and has been resoldered well. Um, the dent that was up here is out. I did that off camera because it's just a regular dent. You guys have seen that before. Done a lot of that in my other videos. Same with the neck dents. They are out. Um, did a bunch of other little stuff too. Uh, that this horn needed. Oh, and, and that dent is out underneath here. That was pushed in. Uh, this was pushed in here. Also got that out. Uh, there was that dent up here that had the tone hole that had been deformed. And that is back to the way it's supposed to look. 
and did that without having that brace come off. Um, this, the octave rocker, is back into shape and nice and tight. So what we have now is a you know, pretty rare Selmer that had uh, a decent bit of physical damage. Uh, a lot of the kind of physical damage that, if repaired poorly, would you know devalue this instrument and make it clearly non-original. Um, but we've done some repair on this that looks pretty good, that is you know true to the intent of the instrument, keeps it you know original looking and looking good, physically correct, uh, and now it is ready for an overhaul if the owner decides to do that. This is a clean, ready to overhaul Selmer Tenor. Now, you know, it's silver plated and it's, as you can see, it's got some, you know, tarnish and stuff on it and some green stuff. And, you know, when this horn comes apart and gets polished, there'll be some little dings and stuff that show up that, you know, aren't showing up on camera right now. There's stuff that I couldn't see because it's hidden by tarnish. But that's par for the course, right? So, you know, if this is a clean Selmer Super Tenor, uh, and you know what you're dealing with, and you've dealt with, you know, 90-year-old, 80-year-old horns before, uh, this is going to be on the cleaner side, on the more physically intact side, with not very many surprises in here. I mean, I, you know, I'd be totally comfortable overhauling this horn. Um, and it's going to be, you know, a standard overhaul. And that was the goal here, was to get this sax a standard overhaul away from, you know, being everything it can be. And that's what we have accomplished here. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, you know, look at that. See how the light is nice and even on that bell? Those dents are just gone. It's really awesome. So a lot of things went my way here. Um, you know, hopefully this stuff looked easy. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to it. Other than, you know, all the, like, skill and stuff. <laughs> but, so this is not the kind of stuff you can do at home. But hopefully, you know, this is helpful, useful, informative for you to understand how this stuff gets done, what you can expect with someone who's decent at the work, um, and, you know, what's possible, and expectations that you can feel okay about having. And if those expectations aren't met, um, you know, you know you're not crazy. There are several people throughout the country who can do work like this or better than this, um, and this is not, you know, super unusual. This is not something that you should... Uh, feel weird for expecting someone to be capable of. So my name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. Hopefully you found that helpful, useful, and informative. Thanks for watching. And by the way, if you did watch all the way to the end, damn, <laughs> who are you? <laughs>